Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Power to the Poets in Honor of Black History Month. I'm your curator, Eileen Castanetto. As we celebrate Black poetry, we also acknowledge its rich oral tradition and its deep historical roots and struggle for civil rights. I'm very honored to listen tonight to living legends and some of the most powerful voices in contemporary American poetry and magic power and the magic power of the spoken word. Now I'd like to introduce our host, someone I'm proud to call brother, native Philadelphian actor, teacher, and artivist, Elijah Pringle III. Take it away, Elijah. Hello, I am overjoyed to be here. Um, one of the things that I want to say, Eileen, that my family loves about Zoom is that um, you can mute me. So um, <laughs> that's a great thing. But today I'm just, I, like I said, I've been excited about this event for the last three weeks. When I saw the poets that would be sharing this stage today, and I consider this to be a stage because this is a presentation, I was just overjoyed. It's like, um, I said earlier, it's like Mount Rushmore of poets. We will show people tonight that Black poetry or Black expressions of word art ranges the gambit between uh, I think the succinctness that you find in spoken word, the preciseness that you find in poetry, and without any further ado, I am so excited um, to witness this person other than on YouTube. He is the new poet laureate for San Francisco. His name is Tongo Eisen Martin. Tongo is an educator and organizer whose work centers on issues of mass incarceration, extrajudicial killings of Black people and human rights. He earned his Master of Arts um, at Columbia University, and he is the author of Heaven is All Goodbyes, which won the 2018 American Book Award and the 2018 Penn Oakland Award and the 2018 California Book Award for Poetry and the 2018 NCI, NCIBA Poetry Book of the Year, which I think is the Northern California Independent Book Association. So without any further ado, the person that I want to make my newest nephew, Tongo Eisen Martin. Right on. Hey, hey stamped in there. Do this for aunt. Um, all, all street life to a certain extent starts there. Sometimes with a spiritual memory, even. Uh, pre down soul clap, your father dying even. Maybe I'll push the city too far. My sensitivities to landfill district thing and minstrel whistles. White supremacists graffiti on westbound rail guards all over come and reauthored. Reauthored by revolutionary violence that chose its own protagonist or a muted stage of genius. You know, the garbage is growing voices. Condensed Marxism for warrior depressives, underpasses in their pockets because they just might be deities or decent good on the panther name of merciful Marxism. This quiet at home life, a metaphor for relaxing next to a person who is relaxing next to a gun. I stared at my father for a few seconds then returned to my upbringing, returned to the souls of Ohio black folks, you know, revolution, damn near pagan at this point. You know what the clown wants? The respect of the ant wants to pull a 38 out of a begging bowl, wants me to hurt my hand on this pen. I'm not tired of these rooms, just tired of the world to give them a relativity. My only change of clothes prosecuted, the government has finally learned how to write poems. Shootouts that briefly align, that make up a parable. A parable like uh, uh, white bodies are paid well. Uh, do white men even have leaders? All white people, white men. The rat pitchers a river. That can almost taste the racial divide can almost roll a family member's head into a city hall legislative chamber, knows who in this good book will fly. And all I do is practice, Lord. And I decided not to talk out of anger ever again. Met my wife at the same time I met new audience members for our pain. We pass each other cigarettes and watch cops win. A city going uniquely linear, Harlem of the West do a true universe. I will always remember you in fancy clothes, my wife said. So here I sit. Uh, twisting in silk ideation, a rifle made of post bellum tar, targets made of an honest language. This San Francisco poetry is how God knows that it's me whining, <laughs> riding among the lesser respected wolves, lesser observed militarization, Dixie List prison bookkeeping. I mean, the California Great Coast are coming. Lynch mob gossip and bourgeois debt collection. I mean, it's tempted to change 
uh, Professions Mint poem in the Chicago briefing. A white sergeant saying blank slate for all of us after this black organizer is dead. Standard academics toasting two buck wine at the tank parade, a bay of nothing, Lord. Nuclear cobblestones, gun line athleticism and the last of the inherited asthma. Children giving white dolls to play with and fear. Facial expressions borrowed from rich people's shoestrings. I can hear hate and teach hate and call tools by people names and name people dead to themselves. And no one getting naturalized except federal agents soon. Carving the equator in the throat soon. Yeah, I'm sorry to make you relive all of this, Lord. All of this pre dime monarchy friends putting up politician posters and snorting the remainder of the paste. Uh, minstrel script shoveled into the walls by their elders. My children sharpening their quarters on the city's edge. You know, for these audiences, I, I project myself into a ghost like state. For these uh, gangsters, I do the same. And every now and then, take a nervous look. East sleep becomes Christ. Sleep starts growing a racial identity. Do you ever spiral, Lord? Has the gang age betrayed us? Be patient with my poems, Lord. So much pain is to point the crown. I mean, it has to be if race traders come with it, Lord. Is that my revolver in your hand? You no know, better presidents than these of yonder cages have called us holy slaves. Filled the school libraries with cop documentaries, baby. I don't have money for food. Shit, I don't have a present moment <laughs> at all. <laughs> you know. I'm off to make a church bell out of a bank window. Kitchens meant more to the masses back in the day and before that we had no enemy. Now, somewhere in America, the prison bus is running on time. Hey, you're gonna lose your job before a revolution hits. Somewhere I won't be home for breakfast. Everyone out here now knows my name and I won't be turned against for at least four months. The cop in the picking line is a hardworking rookie. And the sign in my hands getting more and more laughs. It says, the picking line got cops in it. <laughs> Now, I, I can take care of those windows for you if you want, but someone else has to go inside your gas tank. It was clear to man that rich people had talked too much this year. Uh, why don't you go ahead and throw down that marble park bench everyone's looking up at? You know, get the Romans out of your mind. Maybe a good night's sleep would have changed the last 20 years of my life, playing the instruments like punching the wall. What would you have me do? Replace the population? Get brotherhood back to the winter? Stop smoking cigarettes with the barely dead? You know, they listen in on the Sabbath. Police called the police on me. And there was a white candlestick beneath my detention. I ruined the soup again. Thought the judge as he took off his pilgrim robe behind a white people's door and more. I didn't get lucky. I got what was coming to me. He tossed. Right, fight me back, the man said. Of course, to himself, washing windows with a will to live. Tin can on his left shoulder, enjoying the bright brand new blight with all party goals, both supernatural and supernaturally down there. Uh, what, what is this elevator traveling side to side? Like 1,000 bitter Polaroid pictures that you actually try to eat. All the furniture on this street nailed to the cement. Cheap furniture, but we have commitment. This morning, an essay opens the conversation between enemies. Why? Because you control every grain of processed sugar between here and the poor man's border. Because in the tin can on my left shoulder, I can hear the engines of deindustrialization. You should get in the painting. You know, tell lies more deeply. Hey, this month, I'm rooting for the traitor. Carting cement to my pillow. Here we will build. I'm high again. Not talking much. Hey, why don't you climb up the Oregon pipe to our apartment floor? I'm high again. Calling everything church. Singing along to a courtyard, thanks to a, a horn player's holy pastime. Yeah, I'm just putting a real jacket on it, you know. Talk about a real five years. Keep memories like these in the pocket next to the toll receipt. That man lost a wager with the God of good causes. I mean, he stood up for himself a little too late. Yeah, maybe too early. I can still see 20 angles of his jaw zigzagging through the cold world of deindustrialization. There's an art to it. I will tell my closest friends one day. Uh, appreciate y'all. I'll, you know, it's funny. Um, I had a chance to catch some of your uh, words, Tonga, on um, YouTube. And the person that came to mind to me was Frank Morgan, who is an oft forgotten, but brilliant saxophonist um, who you know, did ballads and bebop, and you are so excessively musical. Um, I think that anyone who he he hears you tonight can hear your musicality. I just ask, I just wanna ask you one question. Um, can you just give me one musical influence? Oh man, you know, you know, Coltrane, man. How could I not? You know, <laughs> and, and and I just and I just bring I just bring them up because that's that's really what I've been drowning in uh, lately. You know. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm telling you, it, I I felt like I needed to be a producer, and I would have definitely. This was a, your love supreme. 
Um, brilliant job. Congratulations on being the Poet Laureate. And before I start gushing with more compliments, I'm going to bring on my next friend who I was supposed to see today, but didn't get a chance to, but I see her now. I'm in love with her. She is in South Carolina, as I am right now. Uh, she is the recipient of the 2020 South Carolina Governor's Award for Art. Her award-winning body of works includes the poetry collection Backbone and Under the Sun. She is a teaching artist and a poet in resident. She conducts workshops for teachers on teaching poetry through the Kennedy Center Partners and Education Program, my friend, Glennis Redman. Good evening, everyone. I'm here in South Carolina in Greenville. I'm going to do two poems, so I'm going to just keep my commentary to a brief, and people know I have a hard time with that. And Aline, I want to thank you. And Elijah, it's so great to see you. I'm going to start off with a poem. Um, I got Lucille Clifton hanging in my ears. And I want to honor Cicely Tyson, the ancestor who just now is our ancestor who just left us last week. And um, But this poem is for my grandmother, Katie Lattimore, from Lawrence, South Carolina, who died when she was 109 years old. Staring into Katie Lattimore's eyes, I go straight into heaven, rest in a blueness not here on earth. With her, I feel a certain mercy I have never known. She who grew hollyhocks, hydrangeas, and hibiscus and drew every stray cat in the county. She who when not picking cotton grew vegetables in a yard and fished in her spare time. She, Rachel's daughter, her mother, born a slave, bore 16 children. She, in those vet desperate danger times, had aspirations beyond the third grade, but she never made it to that one-room schoolhouse. Her knowledge was of another understanding, a candle lit by the Almighty. When I wise, I sit there and study her blue flame, how she smoked her Winston 100s, inhaled a little and let the ash go until it fell like with the dreams beneath her feet. How she drank her Coca-Cola like medicine, loved her potato sweet, made me through my mother through and through until I am what I am. It is why I have a pension for all things old. I am not particular about the new. It is why I gave birth to two incredibly old women. I call them the Delaney sisters. It is their spirit, not their age. I'm not calling my mother's mother a saint, but is there anybody living who want to walk in Katie Latimer's shoes? She deserves the glory of these words and any respite they might bring. Her jet black ambition tied to her hands, her running feet, running through cane fields, cotton fields, always somebody else's share crop land. She deserves to run, to fight, to battle no more, lay it all down by the riverside. But she's in the nursing home with a rage burning bright. I no, because sometimes she won't let no white hand touch her. And when I leave there, she whispers in my ear, loves everybody, child. No matter how black, how blue, how brown, how white, loves everybody. For she was running water in those clear and clean times in Waterloo, South Carolina, where revolution never happened. Not even now. She was and is the point of my inspiration, telling me the revolution is in staying alive. I'm not sure what happened to her 109 years of living in the South. I only know she is closer to God than anyone I have ever known. Imagine lasting heartache after heartache, outlasting the death of almost everyone. Imagine lasting 109 years and having no monuments erected in your name. What are we gonna say to that woman? Are we gonna look around and pretend she's not there? What are we gonna say? What are we gonna do? If we wanna be well, we sit down and we listen with more than our ears. And um, Katie, I want to close with this poem. I was working with the institution and some people who told me that Black History Month was racist. And um, I know we all go through our microaggressions or whatever you want to call them. Uh, Maya Angelou call it being pecked to death. So um, the charge that I wanted to give to folks, if you haven't written your Black History Month poem that's particular to the place of your birth or the city that you live in, I issue that charge for you, uplifting those people in your particular place. Um, this poem is particular to South Carolina. It's called Black History Month Matters All 28 Days. One, because Carter G. Woodson founded Black History Month. Two, 
He knew we needed a bridge, but knew a bridge doesn't appear in happenstance, even though its metal bones majestically rise from the landscape like a magical wonder. Three, consider the foundation plan and set it with mighty intentions. Four, pick the month on purpose, not because it is the shortest, <laughs> but because Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln's birthdays. Five, set the framework and pray for cultural intersections. Six, no 28 days can't hold the multitudes of our black brilliance. Seven, hope 28 days will bud into 365 days a year because black history is American history. Eight, hope someone will be inspired to pick up a book to learn more than the five requisite heroes and sheroes to which black history is always truncated. Nine, give people heart and eyes to see how we have melded our innovations into every brace and strut of this edifice we call the United States. 10, we still tremble when we recite, lift every voice and sing. Because more needs to be lifted than the notes of our struggle and the music of our celebration. 11, let the poets and activists tell how some days feel like ain't nothing changed but the date especially when we speak their names, when we use our voices to lift our ancestors from unmarked graves from every place of annihilation. Anne Cohen lynched in Lawrence in 1818, Willie Earl on Bramlett Road in 1947, February 8, 1968, Orangeburg Massacre, Samuel Fesian, Hammond Jr., Delano Herman Middleton, Henry Ezekiel Thomason, Reverend Sharonda Coleman Singleton, the Emanuel Nine in Charleston, Mrs. Cynthia Graham Hurd, Mrs. Susie Jackson, Mrs. Ethel Lance, Reverend DePayne Von Trieste Middleton, Reverend Clementa C. Pickney, Mr. Tawanza Kibwe Diop Sanders, Reverend Daniel Lee Simmons Sr. 12, from this shadow side, we still quake from sorrow of this reckless loss. Remember how Obama sang us awake with amazing grace? 13, we tread lightly because we know everywhere we step is a cemetery. 14, how long have we been listing our dead? 15, sing them sacred, honor them holy. At 16, as black mothers and fathers, black sons and daughters, we pray for mercy while bullets keep blasting. We know we are so much more than what's been done to us. Force ocean crossings, downtowns, bars, um, our history erased, displaced, whitewashed and erased. 17, we celebrate to remember what's been dismembered. 18, may this Black History Month bridge remind us who we are. 19, we are sweet grass braided from sweet sweat and song. We are cast offs quilted into masterpieces. 20, we are red clay reckonings. 21, we are obsidian epiphanies. 22, we are vessels full of faith. 23, we are black magic flowering through joy and through sorrow in both gray rain clouds and golden sun rays. We have seen it and been through it all. 24, we act as well as pray. 25, we keep crossing over and overcoming. 26, Pray this February bridge connects us. 27, we always emerge from the landscape singing every note filled, throated skyward with blooms. 28, we pierce clouds anyhow. You, you know what, uh, Glennis, forgive me, but it was a leap year, so I was expecting one word, one more day. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. And being in South Carolina and knowing South Carolina the way that I do, I was hoping that you were going to talk about one of my favorite things, boiled peanuts. Well, yeah, see, there's an argument between boiled and roasted. So um, <laughs> I'm on the roasted side, you know, and I don't put sugar in my grits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And I love the bravery of your poetry because in it, you prove that we are historians. And I really appreciate the honor of hearing you give me history straight, as opposed to what we've been hearing lately, not yeah. to be political. Yes. <laughs> so and, I, no. I've got to ask you one question. Sure. Um, of all the things that you love about South Carolina, what's the one thing you will never give up? 
<laughs> I already mentioned it. Number one, um, my grandmama and my mama, but they uh, salmon croquettes with grits and cheese and hot butter biscuits. And I have no shame in that. And if you can't handle grits, I, I, I can't help you. I'm not going to say nothing else, but you just made my mouth watered. And when I see you, I will make you the best shrimp and grits you will ever have. Bet and in. that's for everyone. So everyone get ready. I'm doing shrimp, um, shrimp and grits. Bet then. <laughs> and now from my silliness to a ambidextrous artist who just does everything at master level only, um, a dear friend, um, I'm so proud to say that in my house, I have one of his amazing pieces of art. His name is Bernard Collins. Um, I, to say he's a visual artist is just an understatement. Um, he's a faculty member of um, Fleischer Art Memorial, which is in Philadelphia. Um, mm -hmm. But he is truly one of the uh, spoken word um, legends in Philadelphia. I know he probably doesn't like me saying that, but that's what he really is. And he does harken back to the toasting tradition of African culture, uh, African-American culture. And um, you can see that in one of his poems called The Signifying Monkey or Shine. Not too sure if he's going to be sharing those two tonight or not. But without any further ado, and you can find him on YouTube as well as the other artists who were here today, Mr. Bernard Collins. Yes. Listen, uh, the signifying monkey shine, Dolomite, uh, Rudy Ray Moore. Uh, one of the best movies uh, to come out in the last few years was Eddie Murphy playing Dolomite on uh, <laughs> Eddie Murphy doing a, a pitch perfect um, portrayal of Dolomite on a uh, on Netflix. So if you get a chance, check it out. But Fix News had a crush on Vladimir for years, man. When Obama was in office, the first was clear. Was clear. Steve Ducey thought Russian butt was real juicy. In fact, every one of those Fox and Friends wanted a little communist booty. Seeing them bad chested on that horse made them all want to run and get a divorce. Every time they told his story, the crew seemed fair and balanced and a little bit horny. Hot enough to turn sweat to steam. Then 2016 birthed another wet dream. The KGB get candidate of choice, second best thing to Vladimir's tender voice, corrupt. Uh, the, K, um, the second best thing to Vladimir's tender voice, corrupt, multiple bankrupt, draft dodging, monkey hand, narcissistic reality TV businessman. Didn't know the constitution, his solution, was not given a damn, endorsed by neo-Nazis in the Ku Klux Klan, willing to put his flaws in your face to be sure that you truly understand. And the fools on Fox heard hearts began to flutter like the clown on it, the commander in chief started dragging in folks right down the gutter. Campaign manager, personal lawyers testified loudly and did not stutter but put on Fox and on your idiot box and the newscaster's hearts melted like pancake top butter. Old Vlad laughed in the distance. GOP congressmen fulfilled their own wet dreams. So why would they put up a resistance? Less concerned about dictators, but, that, um, but giving corporate corporations a juicy tax cut, uh, Stinking 98% of us taxpayers with the bill, loading the courts with conservative judges, you know, abortions to stop, and programs to kill. Abortions to stop, and programs to, uh, and programs to kill. So that's fixed news. Poetry, street walking poetry. Quad train, cocaine, shit stain, haiku, doo doo, piss, chat book, crap book, can't cook, so I dip toward Mickey D's. It's hard to be a Big Mac when you come without the cheese. Snake skin soliloquies, venereal disease, iambic pentameter, Ronald McDonald hamburger, free form gay porn, Operation Desert Storm, corns on your toes, bunions. Give me your number two fried hard with extra soul, hold the onions, vagina. Being from Puerto Rico, right from Carolina, to all my concubines who dine on swine at the diner. Birds, chirp, kids, bird, but I fart, gas, glass, grass, weed, 
Kmart, K K K uh, Poetry Slam, Toe Jam, Ku Klux Klan, Ceiling Fan, Poetry, Slow Jam, Poetry. Where are you coming from, Spider Man? Nobody knows who you are, fanatical, radical, lyrical superstar. Poetry, masturbating host of the Pee Wee Herman show a tree. Rain water and shit help the flowers grow a tree. Hoochie on the side, keep that on the down low a tree. Reap what you sow a tree. Pee my name in the snow a tree. Act like you know a tree. Billy Blanks. <laughs> Tie poetry, soul search, Catholic church, two or fathers and five Hail Marys on your rosary. Poetry, eeny, meeny, miny, poetry. Poetry, creep, procreate, and quick sperm penetrate in the ovary. Octopussy, 007 with Sean Connery, me, Raunchy, and Ornery. A lot of so called prophets are coming off kind of falsity. Hopefully, through poetry, I can allow the truth to get close to me. I'm just an instrument. <coughs> I'm just an instrument. <coughs> I'm just an instrument, and the creator blows the notes to me. Poetry, 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 and dirty politics. You know, it's hard not to get sucked in by this obscene political scene, bastard child of po politics and pornography. Voyeuristically, we peek through glass glory holes, aka our boob tubes, pseudo smartphones paying, uh, playing clips of pseudo smart politicians giving all they got, giving us that mental money shot, filling us with the need to understand a reality we, we mostly uh, likely will never touch. The same type mentality that made our housing bubble bust. It's a downright dirty concept a sure enough filthy script you see it in their actions you hear it on their lips readily steadily we salivate knowing damn well we can't participate in this surreal reality show but we let them penetrate and allow that rhetoric and opportunity to flow stroking our egos like a pro they know on election day they can depend on that bottom hole voting against common sense not to mention their best interest Willing to take one for the team as a reality raises from the depths of your self-deception and bites another chunk out your American dream. And every two and four, you beg for more. Stupid as it seems, ignorance and ideology keep you quiet like a ball gag lodged deeply in your face, handcuffing you to the bedpost as the object of your affection robs your place. Seems commonplace to get screwed by some politicians. No flowers, no dinners, no 40 acres and a mule. Fool, drop them draw and assume the position. I guess it must be the way we dress. Go ahead, confess. The shiny, pimped out things have you thoroughly impressed. Sleazy, intellectually easy, and quick to undress. Unwilling to open your mind and use protection. Election after election after election. That's dirty politics. Ba bam Thank you. Um, that's the mic going down. <laughs> I, you know what, Bernard, I could talk for hours, but you know what? I'm going to keep the wordplay going. I'm going to introduce the next poet named James Cagney. And yes, he is gangster. <laughs> But James is a poet from Oakland. He's a Cave Canem fellow and Vonan, Vona alum, uh, both programs that foster black writers. His first book, Black Still Magnolias and the Hours of Chaos Theory, theory um, is published by Nomadic Press. I know this book because I got this book. <laughs> and I'm telling you, the thing about it is that it reads almost as well as James will be presenting. Without any further ado, Mr. Cagney. Much love to you, Elijah. I appreciate you very, very much. And thank you for including me in, uh, in today's reading. Um, uh, and much love to everybody out there, all the poets out here uh, uh, representing today. Really quickly, uh, two poems. Um, this first one is for uh, Marian Anderson, um, an opera singer from the uh, for a bulk of the uh, 20th century. 
a uh, shout out to her and a shout out to uh, one of my favorite old school spirituals, Go Down Moses. So this poem is basically called what it was, listening to Marian Anderson sing Go Down Moses, recorded in 1937. The vinyl noise floor of a 78 filling the ether. Sound of a singed red curtain opening before an audience of ghosts. A pianist primes the air of an imagined drawing room. All these years hearing this song launched by bass throat cannons, Robeson digging the lyrics for oil, to hear it Aloft, ribbon of silk cast through her voice, symphonic and vowel elegant. Listen to the sonic architecture as she spires up onto her toes on the name Moses, her mouth a begging bowl of blood, the power lines of her voice nearly snapping before collapsing on the fainting couch of the word Pharaoh. Singing, she engages her entire body, a sequoia siphoning sound up from the earth's core, converging lyric with private gospel into a shower of sparks from her throat. The pianist sprints through their solo, get back to the story they seem to play. Marion's voice obliges, igniting. The piano ascends, cascades, unable to find any melody to support the skills of the vocalist, who attempts, with her voice, to spin the sun on its axis like a dime. The pianist races the scale, exasperated, their fingers dissolving before returning to the warm hail of crackling vinyl. The sound like a star field of bubbles in a flute of champagne. All right. And uh, a shout out to a uh, other poet, Francine Harris. Um, uh, this poem is pretty much my personal archive. And much love to Carla, who, uh, who knows this poem very, very well. This is called um, What Remains Eternal. A friend, a fence, a dog playing catch with rocks. Our names in porch sirens, nightly hymnals pleading into God's velveteen cloak. A clothesline, a rotary phone, a sideboard flaking blue chip stamps, antique flu quilts shedding panels of wintry leaves. A plum switch, a punch bowl, a fish tank spray cleaned on the lawn with a hose. Our valiant pets self-medicating prescriptions of grass and grandpa scratching his sweaty back on a post. Sears catalog, mint and menthol, the spicy mouth of a hushed church purse. Closets grayscaled with uniforms, shoe shine kits, rooms grinning in photographs and ceramic chicken dust catchers, iron skillets, sage bell pepper, laundry baskets of collards and loud onions. Eggs denote spirit, drunken phantasms drizzling their ectoplasmic art down our smoke yellow walls. And there you go. Thank you guys very, very much. Much love to you. You know what? I nearly forgot I'm hosting. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. I'm telling you, listening to the two of you, Bernard and, and, and Cagney, it's like, wow. Eileen Castaneda, what a perfect pairing. Um, I wish I could take credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? And James, since you mentioned her, why not let's bring her on? The next part will be Carla 
Brundage, uh, son Brundage, excuse me, Brundage. And uh, she is a San Francisco uh, Bay Area based poet, activist, educator, and founder of the West Oakland to West Africa Poetry Exchange. And I'm, I'm loving that. I, I, I may have to move out there so I can be a part of that. Her most recent project is co editing a collection called Colossus Home which features poets from the Bay Area in solidarity with Moms for Housing and advocating for housing justice. Um, I am honored to introduce Carla. Thank you. Thanks, Elijah. Thank you, Eileen, and so wonderful to be here. I'm going to read two poems, um, both tributes to people who influenced. The first one is called Angela. I was a hippie child when Angela Davis strode tall in glittering golden alongside Stokely Carmichael. I can only remember there was a lobby, a beautiful tiny book. I, a Virgo, she in age of Aquarius, pictures of miniature Renaissance castles, peasants working in fields, a 10 point plan we want decent housing. Angela spent what seems in my memory a long time with me that night. She told me many secrets about equality and decent education and ending police brutality through astrological signs and fairy tales. I fell in love with her that night and she signed my book, which I still have. Later, I grew up and studied about her in college, read her books, when I became a conscious of myself as a black woman in America. In my early 20s, I had the chance to see her speak at an event in Oakland. I was so excited. I rushed backside stage to meet her. I wanted to remind her of that quiet night in Honolulu in the 1970s. But when the moment came, my words were lost. This next poem, um, I'm reading is for my um, cousin, my mother's first cousin, Sammy Young. In 1966, my mother's first cousin, Sammy Young Jr., was shot and killed in Macon County, Alabama, for using a whites only bathroom. He's gone down in history as the first African American university student to be murdered in the United States due to his actions in support of civil rights. Part one, I am seven, blue-green shag carpet rubs damp upon my skin, cement bricks for bookshelves, planks of unvarnished wood sag under the weight of hair over and over, ain't got no. My face is always near the floor, belly down, drugs in the house, part of our fundamental belief in freedom. I'm good at occupying myself grown-ups fighting for liberation. We don't talk about him. Before my, we were hippies, my family is conservative. Sammy joins the Navy, fights in the Bay of Pigs, comes home to Alabama and cannot use a whites-only bathroom. He marches. He joins SNCC. He follows the rules of revolution. But one night, he doesn't. What was he thinking, I wonder? Sammy shot in the head. I look at the photo obsessively in dark corners alone, his curls matted with blood still holding the golf club clenched in his hand, a golf club against a gun. What was he thinking going after old man Segrist? Part two. Never tasted Alabama soil Floam clay, it's the dust I'm made of. Sweet tomatoes, Uncle Sam bowed under the sun, gently handles the small fruit. So few men in my family line live. Family secrets buried in denials. Sammy lies in a pool of my mind, golf club in hand of blood. I call my mom on the phone to ask about vigilante justice in the segregated South. We don't talk about that. 
but was there justice, I ask? Time follows no rules and gunshots still deafen. As a child, I was obsessed with a black and white photo. I'd hide in the corner and go over it in my mind. I lay in the bed with the image of Sammy Young Jr. dreaming him to smile. What made him decide to fight his battle alone at night in Macon County after participating always as part of a team? You had emotional problems, my mother says back then. I just did not want to talk about it. All the things she does not want to talk about. My emotional problems, she calls them. Images of blood still pooling on black cement. Imagined weapon, justification for death. Was it in his beautiful head that they found the bullet? College educated brains shot out for being hot headed, uppity. Ripples of this one death penetrate generations. And here I am still swallowing pills. Thank you. I'm, I'm just going to say, wow. Wow. This makes me proud to be a poet. Um, Carla, thank you so much. Um, Ms. Brundage, you have a new fan. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you have a new fan. I would like to bring the next poet out, spoke to him briefly, and is Mitt Tate Stroman II. He is a poet, spoken word artist, and motivational speaker. He is featured at the World Stage in LA, the Comedy Store in UCLA, and more. McTate is the host and founder of a long-running monthly open mic series. It's entitled First Thursday at De Anza College. So at this point, without any further ado, another nephew, McTate Stroman. Thank you, Uncle Elijah and <laughs> Eileen. I appreciate this platform. It's always wonderful being amongst uh, many great poets, and I appreciate you all. Um, I also just released my first spoken word album entitled When I Say Hip Hop. Um, and in the Black History Month, I mean, I, you know, many times we don't we don't get a chance to look at ourselves. And I still see myself as as a 16 year old um, in my mind's eye. And um, this first piece is entitled Fountain of Youth. You see, I crave the creative, so to quench my thirst. I pop open a freestyle, a poetic free verse. I spit an ill 16 to disperse a verse as my subconscious goes to work and I flirt. With the analytical, flashback subliminal, tap into my chi, this MC is spiritual. To seek, search, and find. Through stillness of the mind, that button walk rewind as I travel back in time. To kangos and fat laces, my man David and his braces. Quantum type leaps go deep to creative spaces. Cause you see, I found the fountain of youth where cats stay young. All I need is a break beat and a ill kick drum. I'll get you open. Have you quoting lyrical puns for fun? You'd be like, damn, he's the shit. And I thought I was the one, but that's all right, son. Cause you see, I am the age of your pops. Still a microphone fiend. So you can call my catalog juvenile hall, but behind these bars, I keep some real mean six teens. And please realize that true life is full of strife, plus the temptations of Christ. So if you live by the sword, you'll soon die by the knife. So watch how you're talking, because death be stalking like a thief in the night. And thoughts sparked in the dark, well, must be brought to the light. Thank you. That's that first piece. And I would like to say, I don't know if you guys know this, but in the year 2024, breaking will be a part of the Olympics. And that's uh, my ode to Black history. Uh, and knowing that, uh, I am a spoken word artist, but I grew up a uh, part of the hip hop generation. 
And like I said, my album is entitled When I Say Hip Hop. And so is this piece. You see, when I say hip hop, I tend to think of Planet Rock. Because see, I used to pop lock and blow up the spot from here to Ypsilanti by myself or with my family. You see, I was the shorty of the crew, but my age couldn't ban me. Back in 1983, to me, was the old days. We used to battle with Loma Alta in them hallways where some had skill and still had all A's while young Tracy Murray was hitting J's. Swish. That would love lay. So can you feel me? It still be that same old shit. I now grabs the mic, flip the script, and boogaloo like shrimp. Always down for the cause. I even used to pause with Run DMC, Jam Master J, and my Adidas. I'm just taking it back to the essence of the real hip hop when I was a little shorty and I used to pop. Walking down the street with my new boom box, just a man and his music like Scott LaRock. And I used to break dance every chance I got. Yes, I used to break dance to Toto Franz, Toto Franz in my parachute pants. Back spin and then I posed, chose my b-boy stance. Broke it down and started ticking like Mr. Wave and have him tripping up rock to the joint point and catch him slipping. Cause you see, there was no room in the cipher for young kids who just wanted to chill. It was always like, brother, you're next. So you best keep it real. So I still walk the streets with that same pizzazz. But instead of a boom box, I now rock a pen and a pad. And on my shoulders, a diaper bag. Because above all, I'm just a dad. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. And unfortunately, I think I've talked so much that I've eaten up so much time. I'm going to just introduce the next poet, who is my friend, Raymond Tyler, who is from Atlantic City. He's a um, broadcaster, um, but he also broadcasts in Philadelphia. Philadelphia wants to take part of the credit for him as well. Um, but he is really an amazing person. And I would advise you all to please befriend him on Facebook. He's going to kill me for that because he is an incredible resource. Um, he's actually um, working on an online magazine called Deep Dope Soul. Without any further ado, it is my friend Raymond Tyler. I think we lost Raymond. Yes, I don't see him on my list right now. So uh, he was just there a second ago. So in the hopes of not losing too much time, and Raymond will probably come back to join us shortly, I'm going to jump to uh, Tony Robles, if you don't mind. I was going to ask you to help us help with us. this next piece. Oh, yeah. And yeah, sure. How you doing? I'm doing great. And this is the People's Poet, also from San Francisco, but now in Henderson, North Carolina. The well, Carolina I got to put my shirt, my, my Niners shirt, so I'm always representing Frisco. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I'm sorry, Carolina's claiming you right now. See, I'm, I'm oh. Carolina in Philadelphia, so That's you're right. Carolina. That's End of right. story. That's right. That's right. <laughs> He's right. a Carl, um, Carl Sandberg um, writer and resident, and I would like to um, introduce right now my friend Tony. Thank you, and uh, much love to everybody, all the poets. Yeah, I'm Carl Sandberg, writer in residence in Flat Rock, North Carolina, but my uh, my job is working Goodwill and I just got off work. So uh, I got the thrift store blues right now. But anyway, here, here are two short poems. The first one is called uh, A Black Man Speaks. This was inspired by, uh, it was a brother that was on TV. He was being interviewed on the news and he had moved, I guess, up near the Canadian border. He was, he moved somewhere and he said that uh, he, was really loving the place that he moved to because he didn't have the, the bullshit stress, right? It's called a, a Black Man Speaks. It was on TV, of all places, that four words were said, they let you be. And the man's face was shown on a screen that was flat. The camera searching for dimension, contour, curvature, angle, light, as if probing the ancient face of a statue that refused to die. 
and he was black and he is black and he spoke of a place where where he wasn't looked upon like dirt or grudgingly accepted as if it were a favor and he said they just let you be i am glad he found that place even if it was in his imagination a place where he can be be that be keep being that be keep being the be that he wants to be and free to pursue that be wherever that be might be be that as it may or may not be while reserving the right to say maybe let him be okay and uh, this is the final one like i said uh, i work uh, at the goodwill i just got through mop uh, dust mopping and mopping those floors over there that dust must have been on that floor for 100 years man cuz that 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 was some rough that was some rough ass <laughs> dust but anyway in that job capacity uh, james baldwin came to mind a few weeks ago and this is a poem called thinking of James Baldwin, I, I dedicate this one to my man Elijah Pringle III. This is called um, "Thinking of James Baldwin." Thinking of frequencies on the bottom of shoes, attempting futilities walk on water. Thinking of kings and would-be thrones, dog-eared pages of hymnals. Thinking of you in the never-ending collision of matter and in the matters of the world your eyes are as two lights shimmering a playful beacon of smile connecting the soul's constellations thinking of you while working the register at the thrift store it all starts to register you said that it is impossible for an artist to achieve success if he wants to remain a true artist no validation is needed it all registers as i work the register face to face with another customer determining the price of the ticket much love to all the poets thank you very much thank you tony and um i really appreciate that uh, you know um Baldwin is very dear and near to me for many reasons um, because of my personal relationship with his family. Um, I'm not going to try to get emotional, so I'm just going to say, Ray, bail me out again before I, before I start to cry. Much um, love, much love, man. much love. Man. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. And now my friend Ray from Atlantic City. And yes, Philadelphia is still claiming you, Ray. Um, and please check out his online magazine, Deep Dope Soul. And Ray, if you unmute yourself, we can get started. <laughs> All right, Eileen, thank you very much for having me for your, your Black History program. Elijah, thank you for including me and remind you to send me, uh, for me to send you my resume so you can read off uh, a list of some of the stuff I've done because I've done stuff too. So, uh, but I, I do appreciate it. I do uh, hope you will check out my website. I got uh, two poems for you. First one is called Yeoman Jackson. It's from my book, Shiny Boxes, like the here it, here it go. The first time I watched The Thing That Ate Everything and then sent out for Chinese, I enjoyed the film, but I always get excited when I see Yeoman Jackson. I smile. I smile because for so many years, through so many monster movies, superhero flicks, and even musicals, no brothers. No brothers running from the 20-story lizard, as no brothers as much as being a sidekick, and you know the way they cast West Side Story was some bull. I get excited because YJ is not only in the film, but he's a science officer. So I get to see Yeoman Jackson do some science stuff as part of the crew, right? So it was great to see Yeoman Jackson in the thing that ate everything and then sent out for Chinese the first 10 times until 
we get to 8 minutes and 46 seconds in the film. That's when Colonel Nelson yells out, Yeoman Jackson, go down that dark hallway and investigate what made that strange noise. You can leave your laser here. It's probably just the ship settling. And you know what happened next. Yeoman Jackson goes down that dark hallway to ex to investigate, and the monster eats his ass up and then sends out for Chinese. But the 11th time I watched the thing that ate everything and then sent out for Chinese, YJ gets hip. He tells the colonel, hell no, I ain't going. Ain't no black man alive going to go investigate what made some strange noise, especially not in a horror movie and on a ship like this. Send somebody else. Colonel Nelson answered, but we always send Yeoman Jackson. And YJ responds the way I would. But we always send Yeoman Jackson. And I go. Look, when I took this job, I was proud to be a science officer. But I ain't even run a light bulb off a potato on this ship. And if I'm the freaking science officer, why am I just a yeoman and not a captain or better? And you know what y'all did to Samuel Jackson in Jurassic Park with some <laughs> bull. So you know what? Give me that laser. I'm going to take, I'm going to go to my quarters. And if you or that thing down the hallway comes messing with me, you're going to be crapping lasers for a month. And don't call me no more unless you got some of them green chicks like Captain Kirk. Astonished, Colonel Nelson sighed. <sighs> Very well. If Yeoman Jackson won't go. Ensign Miguel Gonzalez, you and Petty Officer Esther Goldstein, go down that dark hallway and investigate what made that strange noise. So that's that one. And God willing, that would sound like a poem. Uh, my next poem, and that, that's a little something for people of a certain age who remember when there were no blacks in uh, science fiction movies. And then when they was, they killed them within the you know first few minutes. Um, so this next one is called Our Friends. And uh, hear this one go. Let's get one thing straight about our black present before we start talking about black history. We are not your friends. We came to this country as freight, and in 2021, I still get treated like tainted cargo. I still get treated like contraband. I still get treated like three-fourths human. Let me say, it's hard to be friends when every day I feel like stolen property. We are not friends. We could be, but my dictionary doesn't work the same. Our thesauruses don't think alike. To you, friendship means you come first, you come second, you come last. To you, friendship means scraps for me, scraps for my parents. For you, friendship means leftover books for my kids and inexperienced teachers for their schools. Teachers that cannot teach in your neighborhood, you send to my neighborhood. To you, friendship means my kids go to school in a bomb shelter in the middle of a war zone occupied by soldiers that see my children's skin color as the enemy uniform. No, we are not friends. My friends would not hand that to me and call that an education. We are not friends. We could be friends, but we ain't bonding over the latest Cardi B song. You know, down, you're not down because you can say, do the right thing, should have won an Oscar. You're not down because you invited me as the one black guy at your art opening or book signing or college appearance of whatever black poet is hiding in academia right now. None of that makes me your friend. Since this is Black History Month, let's get a few things straight about our black present. My friends... My friends want me to eat steak or some expensive vegan quinoa or whatever they think is best for my health and my life right now. 
My friends do not build their future on me being an American citizen second class. My friends would not watch me or my family members choke to death on a New York street corner, shot to death and left in the middle of the street, or tell me that I have to march for justice. My friends would stand with me demanding justice from the same people we voted in office. My friends, my friends know who Khalif Browder and Sandra Bland and Michael Brown are. And they know 50 other names between Emmett Till and our black present today. My friends do not question looters. My friends do not value life over loot. My friends are not all up in arms because Congress was invaded on January 6th. Because my friends know that Knight Riders, Ku Klux Klan, Proud Boys, the Fifth and Fourth Right, and the U.S. government have been giving us that January 6th feeling through slavery, through Reconstruction, through the Civil Rights Movement that became the Civil Wrongs Movement, through the war on drugs, through police brutality. <laughs> you got a COVID hangover from wearing a mask. We've been in a pandemic since we got here. And even when we socially distant, you accuse people like Malcolm and Farrakhan and the Black Panthers of the same thing your friends and family did in DC on January 6th. And if you want to call yourself my friend, if you are white, then you have to admit what went on before. And you have to admit who's to blame and you have to fix what is broken. And black and brown people, you ain't off the hook either. If you want to be my friend, you have to stop apologizing for me because I'm not obsessed about how, I, how good I can make people feel all the time. And if you can't do that, then the best thing you can give me for Black History Month is six feet of space at all times, even after COVID, and leave me in peace. Peace. So those are my poems. I hope you enjoyed them. Thank you, Raymond. I appreciate it. And I have to apologize. I didn't have your bio, but I do know a lot about you. And I was like, why well, you I don't need this? you to tell all that, bro. Come on, man. I, I want to tell, I got to tell people about the one stitches, thing. Bro. I just got to tell you one thing. He is a contributing uh, uh, writer to Vibe Magazine. But the thing that I like the most is he has this thing called the Arts and Media Think Tank. So I, that's why I think you guys, you've got to befriend him. Because I know Raymond is one of those people, he's like me. If I see your talent, I want to definitely display it. So we are down to the last poet. And I have to apologize, guys. We're a little bit over, mostly because of my yappity, yappity, yap. Um, but this has been a beautiful day. And it is the best present I've ever gotten. I thank you, Eileen. And our last poet is Tarita McKell. She is a story medicine woman. She's an award-winning poet and performance artist. She was featured poet storyteller at the National Association of Black Storytellers, the Museum of the African Diaspora, the Black Panthers 50th anniversary, Octavia Butler's 70th birthday, and at the De Young Museum Soul of a Nation, among others, her book Synchronicity, the Oracle of Sun Medicine was published by Nomadic Press in February of 2020. And if you get a chance, there is a wonderful interview with her and Venus that you can find on YouTube. And I just want to introduce my really good friend, Tarita. Where are you, my friend? Let's see that beautiful face. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Aileen and Elijah, thank you so much. And thanks to everyone. I am just truly honored to be among such amazing uh, poets and the word, you know, what we do as, as poets. Um, it's so necessary now more than ever. And uh, wow, okay, let me uh, get started here. Cause I almost, I thought this was at six or seven. I was trying to remember cause there were some other things, but I, I'm here, I'm here. Okay. Um, 
Okay. So I'm going to do uh, three poems within the six minutes and because uh, one of them is really short. This first one is called, uh, What Happened Who? And what happened to him? Did you see him? I've not heard from him. What happened? He's someone's father's son. Appears he's gone ghost. Have you seen him? Last saw him in the store paying for his son's birthday bike. So proud. No problems between him and the clerk or the store. He pays part cash, part credit card. So proud. So proud this 30 something father buying a bike for his son's birthday receives his receipt, heads for the exit, police watch, stops him. What's wrong, he asks. I have my receipt. They won't answer. What's wrong? What did I do? I have my receipt. My son is waiting for me. I told him I have something special for him. He's waiting for me. Two more assist fellow officer. None will answer the father. One smirks handcuffing him. Another takes his son's new bike. Another empties his pockets, takes wallet, change and receipt. What did I do? What did I do? My son is waiting for me. He looks them in the eye. Don't you have a son? How would your son feel if you didn't come home? His black life didn't matter. Didn't matter. And that's that one. Whew, okay. And that was based on a on a true story. So as you know, this one is called Her Sermon on the Mount. God, he, he, he good. All the time, all the time, all the time. God, he good. He watches over us, take care of us. He watched them take my baby, rape my baby, hang my baby, lynch, butcher, and burn my baby, drown my baby, castrate my baby, lobotomize my baby, jail my baby, traffic my baby, imprison my baby, take land, culture, home away from us and our babies because God is good. He works in mysterious ways. Oh, yes, he does. His ways are mysterious. God, he, he, he good, he good. He's so good all the time, all the time, all the time. God, he's good all the damn time. While he watched them commit zoo genocide on our babies, he, he watched them kidnap our babies, traffic our babies, make them pray, then pray on our babies, prostituting our babies, raping our babies, hanging our babies, starving our babies, sending our babies to far away, so far away, miseducating our babies, turning them into killers, our babies, shooting our babies, offering them up as sacrifice for our sins, sending them to a better place cause we born broken, don't you know? But God, he, he, he good, he, he, he good, he good, he good, he good. All the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. My country tis of the sweet land of, of, of one nation under, with liberty and justice for he good, he good, he, he's so good. Shh, two, quiet child. That God switched habitat for humanity off long ago. He demands insanity runs his warship. 
cut stars from the sky, gave Unc a hysterectomy. Now it's a cross we bear. Death commands we rely on his word. A will be done kills her son cause God is not into women, earth, children, waters, womb, baptism, nor is he into sun, moon, reasons to season seed cook just right. Her mathematics unholy, her knowledge of sin in this garden, only he can be righteous. Are you listening, child? Your prayer ends with a man, a group of men casting monotheistic charms, absolving one another from fault without end. It is coming to a close, but know this child, dog is man's best friend, not woman. Don't you see? The anandrome for dog is God. Whether coming or going, this spell tells you sit, heal, fetch, stay down, bitches, and wonder not why you are treated worse than or why you cannot think beyond his dependency. Three, ask what is blasphemy, sacrilege. What does it look like? How does it behave? its purpose, who pronounced judgment, what epistemic rims support the gate of this castle, which membrane allows certain things in and certain things out for its good, who will it serve, who will it serve, God, he, 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 he good, he good, he good all the time. That's that one. Child, you do what you supposed to. Pay them no never mind, you hear? They rhythm ain't yours to have ever. Your tongue goes back before days do. Just you study your passion, your light. Shine, baby. Come time, it'll be all right. You listen careful now. We ain't dead. That last piece is a Kwan Saba uh, that was uh, written. And um, that's it for me. I think that's six minutes. And thank you um, again, Aileen and Elijah and everyone. I'm done. I am finished. I am through. Uh, Tarita, we have met and um you have definitely been an inspiration to me even if i am older um <laughs> but this has been an amazing evening i want to thank you all because uh, i was speaking earlier with eileen and we talked about black poetry is about the telling of our story not just being griots but also embracing sonnet and haiku and villanelle and any other form of word pattern that will express what we have experienced. The purpose of art, I often say, is to either tell life as it is or as it should be, and the best art does both. So I think tonight I am blessed that I have witnessed such greatness. And I would like to end with a poem that was not written by myself, but written by my friend Eileen Casanetto. And it's about hate. And where I'm from in South Carolina, Haints was ghosts. They were the spooks. So mm -hmm. this is about hate blue. To free yourself of the hate, you need to vanquish it. Paint your porch with the color of water, which is power. With the might to scatter blue light to the green of seawater. But remember, how heavy color can be, how shades of blue come from true indigo, which needed an abundance of water and limestone above the bedrock before it becomes a cash crop, which needed to be pounded and crushed and dusted with wood ash to make blue cakes, which was the currency of slavery. 
a bolt of cloth, dyed indigo for one human body. But mixed with lime and some white mineral, it resembles water, which hates could not cross. I want to thank you all. I want to thank my friend Eileen for that beautiful poem and allowing me to read it. I, I want to thank you all. This was amazing. It is the best birthday present I will ever get until next year when I make you all read to me again. <laughs> and I may be in the nursing home, but you're going to come anyway. But I, I just want to say thank you. Um, I'm going to start with, with Tongo. You just are a a brilliant voice you are you are music that's all i have to say just absolutely music glennis you are my my spiritual sister you are just one of those poets that just tells the truth and you deliver our history in a sophisticated but a folklore kind of way i love it bernard you are a brush no matter what it is you absolutely beautiful you are everything james thank you thank you thank you um i love your punch your power it is great carla this is my first time hearing you and i am so glad you were here i really love the quiet dignity and power as they would say you bring it is it's like that storm thank you mctate Brother, when we were talking earlier, I knew I connected with you. So I want to say this will not be the last you'll hear of me. All of you are going to be, you know, I'm I'm a stalker. Raymond, I, I often credit Raymond for pushing me out of the poetry closet and making me go out there and do more. And I want to thank him yet again. Um, Tony, you are my brother. And uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to give you the name that was given to you by Raymond, but I think it's a good one. And to to read her, I, I don't even know what to say. You always are, as they say, Mother T. So I thank you all for sharing. And at this time, I believe our live will end. I want to thank the audience for listening. You are wonderful. This has been a blessing. Thank you. And happy Black History Month.